Hola YouTube, my name is Ricardo and I'm a wheel addict. I'm still learning how to do this slalom thing, but guess what? I'm about to start this series where I'm going to take you guys with me while I learn how to slalom. So if you want to get a new skill on skates, this video is for you. Enjoy. And now before we even start this video, let me just tell you that this video is sponsored by Micro Skates. And if you didn't know what Micro Skates are, Micro is a company that makes skates for slalom, like we're going to be talking today. They also make kid skates, they make speed skates, urban skates, ice skates, they make all sorts of skates. And I'm pretty sure that in the future they're going to be making more skates. So today I'm going to be using the Micro Delta HML, which is a carbon fiber skate. And these skates were given to me by Micro to make this video. So thank you Micro for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we are going to figure out what skates are good for slalom. What should you be looking into when you want to get some slalom skates? Starting with the wheels. The wheels on slalom skates, they're not always the same. You will see some skates with three wheels, you'll see some skates with four wheels. We'll get there in a second when we speak about frames. Now, the wheels, usually on slalom, you want to be as low to the ground as possible while still remaining speed. What I mean by that is you don't want to have the biggest wheels because otherwise you're going to be too tall and you don't want to be very low and have very small wheels that don't give you enough speed. Also very important, it's going to be the durometer. The most common durometer is 85A, but you should also know that something in between 83 and 87 should set you okay. What you want on slalom wheels is you want a wheel that will roll fast, but you don't want an extremely hard wheel because you're gonna feel everything about the ground and sometimes that's not good because it's not going to give you as much control. Also, a soft wheel is not going to last you as long and sometimes they have that spongy feeling that will make you feel too slow, too, too soggy, if that makes sense. Now, something also very important is going to be the profile of the wheel. If you look at the wheel that I got on these skates right there, it has a much rounder profile than the one that I got on these skates right here. Usually a perfectly round wheel works very very good for slalom because the skate it's going to feel the exact same independently of the angle that the skate is. Now if you have a very pointy wheel more like a speed skating wheel when you're on the point when you're on the the tip of the wheel it's going to feel in a certain way but then when you go on the edges the wheel is going to feel different and most of the times when you're on top it's going to feel unstable so you should have this in consideration when choosing a wheel the material of the wheels should have as much rebound as possible so if you see any skates with a plastic wheel that's not what you're looking for you want something that is as bouncy as you can get. Usually a bouncier wheel, a wheel with more rebound, will last you longer, will roll better, and will have better grip. Now, let's talk about the frame. And now, yes, we have different types of frames. Now, the main difference that you have here is there's a three and a four wheel frame. But the most important thing when it comes to a slalom skate is to have a rocker setup. And if you were wondering what a rocker setup is, well, a rocker setup is a setup that don't have all the wheels on the ground at the same time. Example, if I lean forward, check this, the back wheel is in the air. If I lean backwards, the front wheel is in the air. The same happens with my four wheels. If I lean forward, check this and check this. These two are in the air. So usually on a four wheel setup, you will feel that the skate is more responsive. And the reason for that is, as I just said, there's only two wheels on the ground. And when you have four wheels down, they're usually smaller, meaning that the distance between two wheels is shorter than the distance between two bigger wheels. And having a shorter distance will mean that the skate will turn faster, making it more responsive. So if you're looking for responsiveness, you might like a four wheel setup more. Now, if you want something that is a little bit more stable, most of the times used for speed slalom or something a bit lighter, then you may like the four wheels more. Now, something that you should have in mind too, is that there's several types of mountings for slalom skates. Usually the most common one is the 165 millimeters. This is what 
both these skates at. But there are brands on the market that make frames for kids that are usually 150 millimeters. Some other brands even make frames that are 180 or 195. 195 is mainly used for speed skating. There are other brands that created their own systems like the Trinity from Powerslide. So at the end of the day, there's all these different systems. But if you look for the one that you will find on more skates, that's going to be the 165 that I got on both these skates. Material wise, the frames can also be different, but you are usually looking for the stiffest frame that you can find. You can find frames out of six or 7,000 series aluminum with the higher series being stiffer, like the one that I got right here, it's a 7,000 series aluminum. They most of the times have bridges in between the wheels to increase the stiffness, or some brands on the market, they even make carbon frames so that they have like a, a very stiff feel while being very, very lightweight. There are different heights and lengths of frames on the market. What you should usually be looking for is the shortest frame that will fit your boot. What you should know is the shortest your frame is, the more control you are going to have on tricks on the toe or on the heel. On the other hand, it's going to be very hard for you to skate around because it's very, very short. If you have like a big foot with a very short frame, it's going to feel a bit odd. But of course, this is a decision that you need to make when you choose your own frame, depending on what you want to get out of your skates. Also, if you're going to get like a shorter frame, usually also is lower, meaning that you can have like a 72 millimeter frame or a 76 millimeter frame or even an 80 millimeter frame. And of course, I'm talking about the diameter of the wheels that you are going to use on those frames. Now, talking about the final piece of the skate and that is going to be the boot. Usually you want something that is supportive because it's going to be important for you in order to have control on the toe, on the heel. You do not want empty space inside your skate. For that reason, most of the skaters prefer to use a skate without a liner, like the one that I got here. It's a linerless model, meaning that there is nothing like this that it's removable inside the skate. On the other hand, some people prefer to use a skate with a liner because it's going to allow them to wash it, as an example. It's a different type of skate, but most of the times, if you have a hard boot shell, something like this, made out of plastic, you will be using a liner, while if you have a carbon skate or a fiberglass skate, some of them even with, with Kevlar for reinforcement or for extra stiffness, then most of them do not have a liner. Also on these carbon or glass fiber skates, you will sometimes find different cuffs. The cuff is this part here on top that will wrap around your ankle, the higher part of your ankle, and it's going to give you more support and more control on the skate. And you will find something out of plastic. Some brands even make it out of carbon for extra stiffness and for extra control. Obviously a little bit more expensive too. So those are things that you will find on different skates and just like on the frames your boot needs to be compatible with the frame that you have the most compatible is the 165 millimeter but some boots they will be compatible with 190 millimeter frame some of them will be compatible with trinity from other brands now at the end of the day you're gonna want a boot that is compatible to your frame of choice or you want a frame that is compatible with your boot of choice something like that it needs to work very important the mounting of the boot you want it to be as stiff as possible as an example the one that i got here this is a micro mt4 and this one doesn't have an aluminum plate while this one that i got here this is the micro delta h ML. And the Micro Delta HML, it has an aluminum block built in the carbon fiber shell. And this is going to be much stiffer. Now, one of the last ones, but also one of the most important, sizing. You do not want to buy a skate for slalom that it's going to fit big. You want the skate to fit as snug as possible. And obviously, try to get a skate that does not give you pressure points. And the reason for that is you are going to spend a lot of time on your skates. You're going to need to spend a lot of time on your skates to learn this new skill. It's all about patience. It's all about time on the skate. So you want something that is going to be supportive yet super, super comfortable. And now for last, the extra features that you will find on some slalom boots. Stuff like 
the slider on the side. Most of the slalom skates, they will have some sort of protector for the size of the boot. As an example, this Micro Delta HML, it has a different type of protector. It's not a removable one, but it's still a protector here. On a plastic boot, you don't have that, but on a carbon fiber, you have a toe protector. There's like a toe guard on this boot in order to make your boot last longer. You're gonna fall a lot. It's, it's part of this sport. You need to fall in order to learn. Most of the slalom specific skates also have something like a toe strap and the reason why you want this toe strap it's to keep your toe as low as you can making sure that you're snug you have a snug feet on the toe so when you do your heel rolls when you do your toe rolls you don't want your foot moving inside that's why you need these toe strap and a lot of the slalom skates have it also the 45 degree strap which is more and more common on all urban skate but very very important on the slalom skates this thing right here it can be a ratchet buckle like this one made out of plastic or it can also be a velcro strap this is extremely important because this is going to keep your heel in place no one wants to do a heel roll or a toe roll with a heel out of spot and then of course on top again you can have a plastic buckle or you can have a, a velcro strap it also depends on your taste, how you want your skate to feel. You, then, as I said before, you also have different materials for the cuff. But that is about it. These are the slalom skates. I believe that in the future, there will be a lot more tech that will come into slalom skates. But for now, this is what you get. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned how to choose your slalom skates. And after this video, you are able to make the right choice. And if you did, make sure to subscribe to this channel. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget the thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, you can give me a thumbs down, but let me know in the comments what you didn't like about this video. And like I always say, just don't forget why we all started skating. And that, that is because it's fun. And once again, thank you for Micro for sponsoring this video.